In today's video, we are going to cover an alternate implementation of token authentication. In the standard token authentication, you would pass a token containing user information like username, org ID, etc. to Jasper, which would then take that information and create a new user in the Jasper Report Server repository. For better security, you can also encrypt that token and instruct Jasper how to decrypt that token. Now, this is actually done by implementing this interface that you see here. And once that's done, pointing your application context external auth pre auth XML file to this implementation, rather to this class that you'll implement. In the alternate version of token authentication, you'll see that we don't strictly encrypt the token and then decrypt it after we receive it. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. The example we see here uh, actually implements this differently in that rather than passing the user information in the token, we pass an ID instead. And this ID will be used in a SQL query that queries a database containing the user information. If the query returns a result, retrieve the user information from the result set and proceed with creating the user in the Jasper Report Server repository. The user information in the database can then optionally be deleted if desired to keep the table from being bloated as the user information is now in the repository and no longer required to be stored in the database. This would be a very useful way to secure your user data because the token itself merely consists of some ID, which in any other context would be useless. Your actual user data is in your database and not passed over the wire, whereas in the out-of-the-box or out-of-the-box with traditional encryption examples, your token can be intercepted and potentially decrypted. Now, as you can see here, we have the actual query itself that we're using uh, to try and retrieve the user information based on the ID. And uh, here we have the actual decrypt method, which is part of the interface. And all we're really doing is grabbing the user information from the result set that we presumably have with the uh, row containing all the user information that we want in order to create the user in the repository. Now here we have another method where we're actually looking up the data source information, which is the database that contains the table with all of our user information in it. And uh, we're going to make that call, execute the query, and presumably we retrieve the user information and we'll be able to parse that with the decrypt method that we uh, saw previously. Implementing this example assumes two things. Number one, you have a database that already contains your IDs as well as your user information, which I've just created in my uh, Postgres. And number two, you want to make sure that you are able to look up the database information, the URL, password, username, etc. And since I'm using Tomcat, I've actually added that here in my context.xml file. And this is because in this particular example, it's doing a context lookup. And so in order for there to be some way for the code to know to connect to a specific database in order to run the query, it, that context has to exist somewhere, and in the case of Tomcat, it exists here. Now let's see it in action. So what I've done is set up a visualized call, and what I'm going to do is take one of the IDs that I have here in my database, let's say DEF, and I'm going to go ahead and try to authenticate with this ID. 
as you can see, the report will generate and I'm able to authenticate with this user. And you'll actually be able to see that this user was created in the repository. So this is the user that we just uh, created, uh, which I used to authenticate in the visualized call. Thank you for watching this demo and have a great day.